tried refractive surgeon and trained also in VR. Uh, he is also going to talk about the uh, uh, evolution of tri trifocal IOL technology as to how it has evolved. Over to Dr. Ramamurthy, please. And Thank you, Dr. Mahi. Question. The Should I start? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Mahipal, Dr. Namrata, and Zais for involving me in this uh, webinar. I think it's going to be a very educative evening. My premise is to cover evolution of trifocal IOL technology. I think Sataj has given a beautiful introduction. Uh, today, we know that cataract outcomes expectations have completely changed. No longer is uh, it consists of just vision restoration where we remove an opacity, but it is also considered as an avenue to enhance the vision, to restore the vision to the patient better than what he or she enjoyed right through their lifetime. It's uncorrected visual acuity, not just for distance, but for near and intermediate also. And quality of vision is extremely important. And what we are concerned about is what the patient is going to enjoy on the next post-operative day. And since we are operating on patients in their 40s and 50s and they are living into their well into their 80s, what we do today must far outlive our own professional lifetime. So it's a great responsibility that we have towards our patients. I've always felt a twinge of anxiety, a twinge of disappointment in patients whenever I prescribe glasses. Whether it's a 10-year-old getting his first myopic glasses, a 45-year-old getting his presbyopic glasses, or a 65-year-old after his cataract surgery being prescribed glasses for near vision, even though he might have just received a PMM lenses. So spectacle independence translates to a certain amount of inadequacy as far as present-day ophthalmology is concerned. And obviously, in today's world, you would not prescribe glasses without correcting presbyopia or astigmatism. So why leave behind presbyopia and astigmatism uncorrected in the commonest surgery performed in the human body, that of cataract surgery. So obviously, if the patients were uh, aware of it, they would always demand that their uh, presbyopia and astigmatism is taken care of. But though we have been talking about it for more than two and a half decades about multifocal intraocular lenses, still, as you would see in my subsequent slides, the usage is much, much, much less than what it should be desired. It's essentially because we have not been so sure about the technology of these intraocular lenses. Cost is definitely a factor, but that's definitely not the only factor because for the limited usage. Obviously, if I was given a choice, I would like to see at all distances, near intermediate distance. It would be wonderful if we had an accommodative lens, which could function like a normal uh, lens of the human eye. But obviously, we are still not there, so we have to settle for compromises. So when we had this diffractive lenses, a plus four diopter ad, which was the initial uh, lenses, obviously refractive lenses are hardly there now. Uh, it used to offer excellent near vision, but the patients had to hold their books almost at 25, 30 centimeters. Then came the concept of low ad multifocals, then uh, yield off lenses, where, which were good for intermediate vision, but were quite inadequate for near vision. That's the reason that we have used to have significant conversation about mix and match, about monovision, about micro monovision, about blended vision, etc. Our patients were expected to decide what is important for them, whether it's near vision that's important for them, whether it's intermediate vision that's important for them, implant in one eye and then titrate the power of the lens that's being implanted in the second eye, etc. So obviously that is something that some patients and some many physicians they are not willing to accept. Then again, now we realize that it's not the quantity of vision that's important, but it's the quality of vision which is much more important. Today, we don't talk about 6.3, 6.2 vision, but we are concerned about the quality of vision. And whatever multifocal intraocular lens that you are talking about, all of them work on the principle of splitting light. And depending upon which company's slides you are using, there would always be a certain amount of loss in contrast, especially in night vision conditions like this. It's simply because multifocality, either in the cornea or in the lens, is non-physiological. We have, as physicians, we have always felt that when we imitate nature, do something to restore physiology, we are successful. In the sense that if uh, there is an opacity, there's a cataract, we remove it. If blood pressure goes up, we reduce it. If intraocular pressure goes up, we reduce it. Uh, multifocality was never in the concept of nature, and that's the reason that when we divide light and artificially expect the patients to adapt to it, there is a certain amount of uh, inconvenience, there's a certain amount of discomfort that creeps in. Sartaj already explained about this concept. Basically, when you are using multifocal intraocular lenses, 
you are buying vision at different distances using the currency of contrast and there is always a certain amount of loss in contrast these are the rays of light which are brought, brought into focus in, in front this is from the near focus this is from the distance focus and in case the patient is looking at a distance object these rays of light are going to diverge and form a blurred image so this is the signal which is the advantages which is in, uh, responsible for the visual acuity of the patient while this is the noise which deteriorates the quality of vision as was explained earlier they, with the conventional diffractive lenses 80 to 82% of the light what constituted the signal while 18% of light was constituting the noise today with multifocal with the trifocal technology because of diffractive optics that's incorporated in this 86 to 88% of light is used for producing the signal it is not the increase in 4 to 6% of light but the fact that instead of 18% of light constituting the noise is being reduced to 12% and that's the reason there's a inherent capability to improve the quality of vision with the trifocal and trifocal lenses compared to the diffractive multifocals again the today with the 80 lisa trifocal we have this division of light which seems to be optimal because most important to us is the distance vision 50% of the light goes towards distance 20% which is for intermediate and for 30% for near vision and this deep focus curve tells me all all that i need to know in the sense that right from infinity to a deep focus of almost minus 2.5 diopters when you implant a trifocal and hit uh, emetropia then you get a vision of about 0.00 to 0.10 logma visual acuity which even if unilaterally implanted or bilaterally implanted almost mimics what the patient to ignore need in their real life conditions and that's the reason there's so much of interest and uptake of multi trifocal and trifocal lenses these trifocal and trifocal lenses though we have incorporated in our practice for quite recently they have been around for quite some time the first lenses came almost a decade back the carl zeiss introduced it about 8 years back and quite rightfully they introduced the 80 lisa toric just a year later obviously today all of us understand that no multifocal intraocular lens is going to uh, work well unless it has the inherent capability to correct corneal astigmatism if you leave behind corneal astigmatism uncorrected then obviously the multifocal intraocular lens patient is going to be quite unhappy there followed panoptic intraocular lenses panoptic toric etc the good news is now we have the freedom of choice to pick and choose what exactly our patients need and what we are most comfortable with the indian manufacturers have also come up with trifocal and trifocal lenses quite a few of them which are good and today we owe it to our patients to incorporate this in our technology but is this what is happening let's look at the total amount of cataract procedures done in india is about 7.5 millions this is equal, this is more than what is being done in united states china and most of western europe put together and the good news is it's growing at the rate of 3 to 4 percentage and the pmma intraoc lenses rightfully where the large incision is needed is just in about one fifth of the cases with four fifth of the cases getting monofocal foldable intraoc lenses and uh, still still hydrophilic lenses are largely implanted in almost three fifth of the cases what is more relevant to today's discussion is maybe this slide where according to the last year statistics the trifocal intra the toric intra lenses were just about a lakh and 40000 intra lenses that were implanted but the good news is that all ophthalmologists is realizing the importance of correcting cylinders and unlike the uh, phaco emulsification or cataract surgery which is growing at the rate of 3 to 4 percentage the increase in the uptake of toric intra lenses is almost six times more as far as multifocal intra lenses are concerned it's 110000 as growing at the rate of multifocal uh, 17% so obviously in the indian ophthalmology the interest in multifocal toric as well as toric multifocals is constantly on the rise and rightfully so if you look at the sale of trifocal intra lenses it was just about 7 to 8000 last year obviously with the amount of interest that surfacing this number would have uh, gone up exponentially in 2020 but for this uh, uh, disturbance put in by covid but i'm sure in spite of it will jump back and trifocals will come to stay so uh, 0.1% not just of cataract surgery but of the entire foldable market constitutes trifocal intraocular lenses and i believe that we owe it to our patients and ourselves to increase this quite significantly what exactly or the 
uh, barriers to the uptake of these trifocals or for that matter multifocal intraocular lenses multiple webinars multiple presentations uh, many of them very good and it often leaves behind an impression that you need optical biometry you need topography you need great evaluation of the tear film abrometry high end phaco machine LRCs, advanced microscopes, digital imaging during surgery so that you can orient your lenses exactly to go ahead and uptake uh, uh, trifocals. I would beg to differ. I have all this access to all this technology. I use them extensively. I do believe that they are relevant, but obviously it's not necessary for you to go ahead and incorporate trifocals in your uh, armamentarium. I have multiple centers and there are centers where we do not have all this technology. And still I encourage my surgeons, quite often excellent cataract surgeons, to go ahead and use multifocals and torics, and they are adapting to it. So good immersion A scan, a standard manual auto or autokeratometry is quite adequate. The difference between manual keratometry and immersion A scan and optical biometry is that optical biometry is idiot proof. You could, in a normal eye, you could go, go ahead and have a relatively inexperienced optometrist doing it, and still you could go ahead and get reasonably good results. But in case you have perfected your technique of immersion A scan, keratometry, it's, uh, whether it's being done by an ophthalmologist or by an experienced optometrist, it's possible to get excellent uh, uh, refractive outcomes, at least in the normal eyes. Again, standard formula like the Barrett Universal Suit has become available. And this is available right in the uh, ACRS, APACRS websites. You don't need complex equipments to calculate these. And the company calculators based incorporating this formula are also quite reliable. So all you need is good FACO techniques where you can give predictive, predictable refractive outcomes. And you should understand the importance of corneal astigmatism. Again, the, the understanding the capabilities and limitations of these modern intraocular lenses and counseling your patients uh, accordingly is extremely important. Just to give you an example, these are the eyes of a patient bilaterally done in our, in our own institute. Obviously, this lens is decentered. While this, as you can see in the diffractive rings, is very well centered. This kind of decentration, the level on diffractive multifocals, even with uh, monofocals, would uh, cause significant amount of coma and trifo uh, trifoil. And obviously, you can't blame the lens for deterioration in the quality of uh, uh, vision. When you dilate the pupil and see the reason why this has happened is there has been a rexis runoff and there has been a displacement of the lens. So as far as you can avoid this, which is obviously possible with a person who is well trained in FACO emulsification, who is confident of his outcomes, I think whether it's trifocals or torics, it's uh, something that you can always take on. Uh, Pre-operative workflow will be subsequently dealt with, but just a slide on this because it's relevant to what we do in our own setup. Presence of cataract and interested in surgery of the patient expresses an interest in undergoing cataract surgery. We make sure there's no significant ocular or systemic comorbidities by the tests that are relevant. Then the patient straight away go for an optical or biometry or a keratometry. Even more than immersion A scan, it's keratometry which is important for that. Subsequently, the surgeon or the counselor talks to them about uh, elicits their interest in premium intraocular lenses. And in case they're interested, then we go ahead and then uh, counsel them for toric trifocals or trifocal toric. Today, we have st virtually stopped talking about EDOF lenses or about uh, bifocal lenses. I use them ex extensively, had a wonderful experience with them. But today's world, I believe that trifocals are the way to go. And the reason for that, as I already alluded to, they take care of all distances and the patients are not requested to pick and choose as what is needed for them. Uh, the most important factor, again, is to decide as what exactly is important for the patient and restrict the conversation to that. If you start from right from PMMA and go on to trifocal toric with the LRCS technology, the patient is going to listen to all of it and go elsewhere for surgery. So within a few minutes of interaction with the patient, we decide whether the patient is a good candidate for my, uh, premium intraocular lens technology, what's the kind of corneal astigmatism that the patient has, then the subsequent uh, interaction is all about what is best for the patient. And most importantly, you it's uh, important, it's ethical for you to tell the demerits of the lenses, tell all the positives and negatives, but most often the patient accepts your suggestion. They want you to make the decision for them so it's important that you understand the requirements of that particular patient and accordingly suggest what is, what is correct for them. 
I believe there is an opportunity for us to try, take on trifocals in a great way from its present 0.1% of the um, uh, of the foldable intact lenses. It's because there is a change in patient lifestyle. The patients are living into the 80s and 90s. They are still at this age group. They are involved in sports. They are very active. They want to drive on their own. There's improved awareness of general health and eye diseases among patients. And they are willing to pay for an advanced technology procedure by patients. We might think one lakh for a cataract surgery is it right to uh, demand this of a patient? But obviously nowadays that's what it costs a patient to get a appendix removed in a corporate hospital. So obviously for their vision they can afford to pay this kind of uh, at least a certain section of the population can afford to pay this kind of a price. An increase in access to advanced technology to, to more and more ophthalmologists. Look at the number of webinars. So many youngsters, middle-aged people. Have the kind of interest that Indian ophthalmology is evincing towards modern technology is unparalleled. And this is the right time to offer the best of technology to our patients. Every opportunity comes with challenges. And what are the challenges that we have in incorporating trifocal intraocular lenses? The surgeon confidence in offering multifocal intraocular lenses. Usually, because of one or two patients who have been dissatisfied with their multifocal intraoculars and have taken up much of the chat time, often forgotten is that 98% of the patients who have been very happy with their quality of vision, they enjoy subsequent multifocal or trifocal implantation. And then the fact that the, uh, the, these lenses are slightly uh, significantly highly priced is again a factor. Often I come across patients who have to do uh, decide between multifocal intraocular lenses and LRCS. They are not able to um, adapt both of them. In those cases, I strongly recommend them to go ahead with a multifocal intraocular lens, a multifocal toric lens, because that, I feel that that offers more value for money to these patients than spending money on LRCS technology. I am all for laser refracted cataract surgery, but when it comes to outcomes, obviously the quality of lens that you implant is much more important than phaco emulsification or LRCS. This is a study which was conducted by Alcon in the year 2017. I mean, coming to the last couple of my slides. And this was called the Go to See campaign. Though it was conducted by Alcon, this is relevant to all of us who are practicing ophthalmology today. 12 countries in Europe, Middle East, and Asia, Africa were covered. Basically, the patients surveyed were above the age of 60 years. Only 39% of the patients were aware that cataract surgery can offer vision correction in the sense that the patients, if they were wearing minus six diopters of power, they believe that after cataract surgery also they would like, they are li likely to be left with that kind of power. They never under realize that uh, uh, most often once the intraocular lens of the right power is uh, implanted in the eyes, the need for glasses is going to diminish. Again, 82% of the patients were in link to undergo advanced surgical option, paying out of the pocket to treat the cataract and improve their vision. So if only we take out time we explained to them that these lenses are going to be significantly advantageous to you. Of course, there is a price to pay. Then many of your patients are going to come around and adapt this technology. So obviously, we as surgeons of the third millennium owe it to our patients to uh, um, give adequate information to them. This does not mean that once you have the trifocal intraoc lenses, you can forget all about the counseling that has been drilled into our heads about multifocal intraocular lenses. Even today, we talk about less dependence on glasses. Dysphotopsia is definitely something to be considered. Bilateral surgery with a space between the two eyes is what we recommend. Touch-up procedures may be needed. And neural adaptation is something that uh, the patients have to live with. Four to six months might take for them to really adapt uh, to their intraocular lenses. The final slide, I think trifocal technology has come of age. And you should not be the first one to adapt technology, neither be the last one. You owe it to yourselves, you owe it to your patients to go ahead and adapt them. Thank you so much for your kind attention.